Welcome back guys, how's everybody doing? This is the first video of GPU June here in the channel. GPU June is an event by Pixel Pipes where we talk about retro GPUs. And the definition of a retro GPU here is before the unified shader architecture was implemented. That was the 8000 series for Nvidia released in 2006 and the HD 2000 series by ATI slash AMD released in 2007. So to honor GPU June here, we're gonna have retro GPU videos every week of the month featuring not one, but two retro video cards. Instead of a head-to-head -head battle between competitors, we are doing a comparison between two GPUs of the same chip maker, but in different price tiers. And this is what we're calling the big brother versus little brother battle. To compare the video cards, we're using the universal AGP system we put together last week here in the channel. You can check that out later if you like. To kick off GPU June here in the channel, we're going way back with the little brother being represented by the Asus TNT2 Vanta and the big brother, the Diamond Viper V770U with the TNT2 Ultra GPU. Both the little brother and the big brother have two pixel shaders, two texture mapping units and two render output units. They're compatible with AGP4X and support DirectX 6 and OpenGL 1.2. The Asus TNT2 Vanta was released in October of 1999 and it's based on the Riva TNT2 M64 chip. The GPU clock runs at 100MHz while the SD RAM memory runs at 125MHz with a 64-bit interface. This card in particular doesn't come with any special drivers, it uses Nvidia's reference drivers. It was released with a price of $100, a true gaming video card for the masses. This video card didn't come with any kind of cooling passive or active and after the preliminary tests I realized it was getting a bit warm so I had to figure something out. The Big Brother, the Diamond Viper V770U was released in March of 1999 with a price tag of $229. It also uses the NVIDIA Riva TNT2 GPU, but the Ultra variant. This card has 32 megabytes of SD RAM running at 183 MHz at a bus width of 128 bits. The GPU runs at 150 MHz. This video card included software with different levels of boost for GPU, a sort of collection of overclock presets. We're not overclocking the video cards in this video, as we could fall into an infinite rabbit hole of frequencies cooling in software. Now to the tests. Considering these video cards are from 1999, we'll start with games from 1997 and go 5 years forward to 2002, testing one game from each year. First game from 1997 will be Quake 2 that conveniently has a time demo we can run and check the results at the end. In Quake 2, the Big Brother was 50% faster than the Little Brother. Half-Life is a classic from 1998. For this test, I chose the scene in the reactor as it melts down and creates the hole in between dimensions that was just the beginning of the problems at Black Mesa. This game has VSync on by default and it runs either at 30 or 60 FPS, but for this test, VSync was forcefully disabled in the NVIDIA driver panel. The game is capped at 72 FPS and even the TNT2 M64 gets to that mark at some points. While playing the game with the TNT2 Ultra it stays mostly capped at 72 FPS, sometimes it drops to the 60s. As with the TNT2 M64, the game stays mostly over 60 but occasionally drops to the 40s. Still a great experience anyway. The game we are running from 1999 is expendable. This game also has a time demo asset that can be used, although it seems like it never ends. Expendable is a top-down shooting game probably inspired by the likes of the arcade game Smash TV. On 800x600 at 32 bits, we start to see the little brother give a less than desirable playing frame rate while the big brother still holds up pretty well. After a few minutes, the Ultra had an average FPS of 28 and a maximum FPS of 53, while the M64 had an average of 21 and a maximum of 35. So on average, the Big Brother was 35% faster and on the maximum FPS, it was about 50% faster. Although the game is smoother with the Ultra, it's still enjoyable with the M64. 
I realize there are tons of games we can try from 2000, but as usual, I try to hit something a bit different sometimes. So here is the original Hitman, codename 47. It's a game that can be played in a weaker card like the TNT 2 M64, because although it's a third person slash FPS game, it's not really fast, it's more focused on stealth kills. Here I did the best I could to compare similar situations, but they won't be exactly the same because I'm just playing them through. I also used some of the in-game rendered cutscenes to have exact comparisons. In this game we often see the big brother performing twice as fast as the little brother, my guess is that this game uses more than the 60MB of VRAM the M64 has to offer, while the 32MB of the Ultra is enough for the game to perform. Serious Sam is a classic FPS from 2001. This game takes a lot of inspiration from Duke 3D like corny macho man phrases and the Johnny Bravo stereotype hero look, but it's all in good fun. Different from Hitman, this game is fast paced and playability will suffer a bit if the video cards can't keep up with it. The big brother here performs 50 to 100% faster and in the most extreme cases it's probably because the little brother lacks VRAM for textures in the more complex scenes. Last but not least, from 2002, the latest and most demanding game we have for this big brother little brother battle is Dungeon Siege. I love action RPG games and this game has a special place in my heart. Back in the early 2000s I worked in the LAN cafe and me and my friends used to pull all nighters playing Dungeon Siege in the co-op game. For the performance, it's hit and miss. Both the video cards struggle, I believe that neither have enough VRAM for this game. The Ultra can have a performance gain of up to 40% over the M64, but neither can hold the game over 30 FPS. Good thing this is an action RPG, and you can still play it with both video cards. So this will be the end of our first GPU June video here in the channel. You tell me in the comment section what do you think of the TNT2 cards. Personally, I was impressed by the M64 Vanta. Of course the Ultra is the video card you want to get here, but remember that on release the Ultra was twice as expensive as the Vanta at $229 versus the $100 the Vanta cost. And they give you the ability of playing basically games from the same time period. So, of course, that's all to be expected, and I hope you got some useful information or at least had some fun. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, like the video if you like the smell of vintage transistors, dislike the video if you like to see oxidation on your PC parts, and I'll see you next time.